going on people, it's your boy Eric Moconzo, light heavyweight fighter, fighting straight out of Brixton, the girls gym, having 8 fights, 2 knockouts, look out for me, fighting on the 3rd of March, you will call Bethnal Green, be there. So Eric, how long have you been boxing? Boxing for about, how long have I been fighting for? Uh, turn pro at 2012, no 2011, had my first fight in 2012, didn't go down to plan. I went in there, I was a bit excited. The occasion got to me a bit um, you know, in terms of just you know, the first fight excitement. My people was there. You know, I managed to put on the first I managed, I managed to put on the show uh, the first few minutes, put down my opponent, he got up. Then next minute I knew I was on the floor. And then I lost that first fight. And after that, career just kind of went downhill from there. You know what I mean? Yeah, just in terms of just I don't know, I wasn't really expecting it to go down the way it went down. You know, and then I just resorted back to um, the working life because at the time as well, I just had my first son. And um, I could see train, mixing training with trying to be a full time you know, father and husband at the same time, it just wasn't mixing. It either had to be the one. It's either you fight full time, you train full time, or you give up one. Do you know what I mean? And, just kind of chose to just do what's more important and put kind of my goals and dreams aside for a bit um, and that's what I did and three years later um, I teamed up with Ted Bami, former European champion uh, you know, I hit him up on social media he said yeah why don't you come down I see how you are take a look at you he saw me you know, he saw something that he you know that I didn't see he, you know, he said to himself do you know what um, we can do something. We can do something. Just give me time. Uh, give me, you know, be patient. Uh, most importantly, just work hard and don't give up. You know, so I started working with Ted within the first year. You know, I had two fights. I knocked out two more spins. Uh, things were kind of flying. It was kind of looking good, you know, because I was back. I was feeling good at myself that you know I knocked out two prospects. It wasn't no, it wasn't no journeyman like it wasn't no um, Eastern Europeans. I've just been flown over. No, it was like top guys, you know. Yeah, I put them down on the floor and then went over. I think I went over to Manchester and I had and I fought one guy there and I don't know what I was doing. I don't know, I don't know what was going on. I, I don't know what was going through my head, but. I just went in there, I think you can even find the fuck on YouTube as well. I just went in there thinking I could just spark this guy out cold, you know, because I was in his territory, um, the odds were stacked against me, obviously, because I was a weight fighter, but I just thought I could take his head off from the first belt, you know, and if you see the fight, it didn't turn out that way. I got put down first by a serious left hook, but some way, somehow, I managed to get up and fight on, but within the fifth round, you know, the ref had to just stop it because he thought, you know, you were just sustaining too many blows and shots to the head. And then after that, I just kind of went to my show again, to some school show again. And I started just, I kind of, the whole um, journeyman spell just got, got, like, it just it took over me. And I just started, I just started fighting for money for just the sake of it, you know, just to make a couple quid. Everyone around me that I was training at the time, you know, I was training over in Miguel's, you know, you've got the Chris Congos, Isaac Chamberlain's, Richard Riakpo, um, John Hardin, these are all the people I trained with at the time and still do now. And they were just telling me, Eric, stop, man, don't do it, please don't do it. I know you've got a family, I know you've got, you know, a kid, you know, a family to feed, children, wife, but don't do it, like, don't, don't, you know, um, don't waste your talent. Just because you know you're going, you're, you're fighting away. You know you're you're better than this. You're more than this. You know um, I didn't listen. I just I couldn't be bothered. You know I, mean? I just couldn't be bothered. But then I just I kind of just stopped after my last fight. You know I fought over. I don't even know where I fought last time. Somewhere near Liverpool, or Everton, some those type of areas. Once that happened, I just thought, you know, after that fight, I thought, oh, forget this, man. This is very, this is long. It's frustrating, I'm not getting anywhere, so I'm just gonna go and just be a normal citizen and just work nine to five, you know. 
and that, it, it still didn't sit well with me because I thought I was missing something. I thought I still had a purpose in boxing. You know, I thought I could still give something back. Do you know what I mean? You know, you know, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm, you know, the best boxer out, out there because I'm not at all. You know, I'm not. I'm, I'm, you can't compare me to the limp, to you know, the Olympians or the ones that have turned over from the Olympics. But one thing I do have is heart. You know, when it comes to you being gutsy and fighting, that's what I bring. Do you know what I mean? That's what I bring, literally. You know, when I, people who know me know when I step in that ring, I will fight. I will fight anyone, anywhere. You know, but you know, my coach just gave me a good talking to. He said, Eric, please, yeah, you're still young. Don't make the same mistakes that I did. You know, I can see you're a family man, which is what you value the most and which is what your priority is. Yeah, family first, absolutely. But don't let your career go downhill just for the sake of you being you know being an away fighter being an journeyman you can still make something of yourself go there train hard train like you've never trained before knock these guys out do you know what i mean and here 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 i am man i'm back i'm back back to the ring march the third you know um i've just been training hard training hard just doing things a lot diff differently now my mind's in the right place. I know what needs to be done. I'm focused. I know what's important. Um, you know, talk to us about the changes you have made. I mean, we can talk and say we've made changes, but what are the changes that you've done, Eric? That you think? In terms of just in terms of like, it, basically, with boxing, mm -hmm. yeah. If you want to be a full-time fighter, you've got to give up certain things. Say, for instance, you're working full mm -hmm. full time. You're gonna to have to give up that full-time job because it's just not gonna cut out. You can't be a full-time um, you can't do a nine to five and then come straight to the gym because you're just going to be worn out. And you're knackered. So, yeah, knackered. Like a nine to five will not cut it. Because you have to wake up, you've got to do your runs at five in the morning. Do you know what I mean? Um, you got, you know, you you've got to do all the dieting. Um, you know, all the all the, it's like the um, sports therapy in terms of massages, all of them thing, things there. You know, what really kills people is money. They have to balance it. Either you grind in boxing until you kind of, you know, get a date to fight so you can earn some money, or you go back into work, work there for a couple, couple months, come back, do your medicals and everything. I mean, me personally, I literally scraped through just doing my medical. Do you know what I mean? Because I was, I was just, you know, money was just tight, man. Honestly, but I had to give up, not give up work completely, but kind of just, you know, say, you know, I'm just going to do this part time on the side for now main focus now is just training. What keeps you going? It's just family. I, 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 I honestly, when when I come home and, you know, my, as soon as I step through the door and my children just, you know, they hug me, even though, you know, sometimes circumstances can be tight financially, but as soon as I step in it, you know, they hug me, they seem happy, my wife hugs me, kisses me, you're right, babe, da 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 da, you know, food still on the table. Every, Everything's just smooth, and that makes you think of what's really important. So, what means more to you? Glory, belts, money, stability. 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 Okay. Why? Belts are always going to be there. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Belts. Do you know what I mean? My name. Once, once I kind of started getting the wins and making a good name for myself and um, being a good role model or people using me as an example of where I've come to where I'm heading to be, um, I think that means a lot more than just money. So talk to me about this journeyman route. I have to take the journeyman route. How, how, did, how, how does a promoter treat you when you're, you're going down the journeyman route? Do they tell you you're a journeyman? Do they tell you you are there to get beat? Or is it a case that you kind of know that the way the record looks, you're there to get beat? Is it a, is it a silent thing? Or is it a, a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you're getting, you, you go over tonight? <laughs> no, not really. Because not really, people want to know what the journeyman route really you, is. Look, is there a, a... This is pro gaming. This is the pro game. Yeah. 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 If you're not a top ticket seller, yeah. Yeah. if you can't let off 100 tickets per fight etc 100 tickets plus yeah yeah then the other way is going into the 50 50 fights yeah in terms of you sell a better tickets 
your other, other opponent sells a bit of tickets and then you know yeah, you can pay a bit to the opponent pay to, it's or if you can't do that if, if you can't even let off even 50 tickets yeah then you're gonna have to just resort back to the journeyman which is you go in there just to earn a bit of money okay would it be harsh to say that a fighter that just comes with gloves and comes to fight that's not enough in today's day and age how do you mean well i can fight i come with gloves yeah. i'll fight mm -hmm. is that something that we need to kind of put to the side and i say i'm a fighter but i can talk i'm articulate i can sell myself i'm prepared i'm prepared to you know but you can be articulate you can be smart you you can be well mannered and talk, you know how to talk to people, be a people's person. That's all well and, well and good. Yeah, but doesn't that help you know sell I mean? tickets? If you're if you're a people's if, champion, but it, that's, if 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 you can bring that salesman mentality. Yeah. Well, you have to, to be in boxing, don't yeah. you? If, if 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 you can sell yourself, self promote, go to, go to people, go to different com companies and say, you know what, I'm fighting. Um, you know, I'm looking for kind of sponsorships. You know, this I'm fighting on this show. Um, the benefits that you will get is. Your company will be on my t-shirts, etc. Et um, some will say yes, some will say no, some will just slam the door in your face and don't, and don't say anything. So do you think that being braggadocious is the way going forward? Like, but I, I it works on some, it works to a certain extent if you can back it up with wins. There's no point of you bragging, being outspoken, talking trash, yeah, and then when you get in the ring, you, you get Yo. smashed up. But people, people, some people like that. Some people like to see a man talk. For, Adrian Broner to a certain extent. Rub his mouth, yeah, but he doesn't get knocked out. That's the thing. He, he... No, he didn't get knocked out, but he got beaten up by... Um, Ray Dana. Yeah, pretty badly. I mean, the only person that's kind of, I say, sustained it yeah. is Money Floyd. Do you know what I mean? He's kind of sustained that, you know, talking trash. But even with him... Yeah. He kind of, as he was getting to the end of his career, he toned it down. He toned it down a bit because he thought, okay, I've done this now. Yeah. You know what I'm I'm about. But till today he's still getting tested. The guy's beating everyone in his era, but he's still getting tested. Do you think Floyd's era is good for boxing? Because there's so many people today wanting to do the shoulder roll, wanting to do the mitt work, but they just do it so wrong. And so when they fight, it It just depends how because with Floyd is different. Like he had the mouth as well to back it up. And with him, he was really like when, when I mean the guy who talked trash. I mean, look at the De, the De La Hoya fight. Non-stop trash. I mean, guy was bringing chickens to the a chicken to the press conference. Do you know what I mean? With a, a, a med, a, a, you know, a medal around the chicken neck. Do you know what I'm trying to, you know what I mean? <laughs> do you know what I'm trying to say? Stealing the guy's bag, like just doing crazy things. And he done all that constantly. Um, he was, I mean, oh man, you know, I think the late when he got later into his career, we, yep. we saw a glimpse of it with the McGregor fight. Yeah. You know, but that was kind of, you know, an ending, an, an ending to an era anyway. Like, okay. You know I mean? Let's talk about something coming up. Like. Chamberlain or Coley. Why would you British <laughs> beef. <laughs> British beef. What do you want to know? It's not what I want to know. It's what no, I want to know from you. I want to know is what I want to know what you know. This is this is the Eric. This is the Eric interview. This ain't the, this ain't my interview. This is your interview. What do you want to know? Like, what well, you what, whatever you want to tell me. If you want to tell me, I know, the only thing I know yeah? is that my boy Isaac has been training like um, he's just been training like an absolute poor man, like a poor man who has got everything to lose. That's uh, that's the only thing I can honestly say. I mean, it just shows even through when he, you know, when you go on social media and you check his, you know, his physique. Look at Isaac's physique from when he fought, you know, Wadi, when he fought uh, all, the, all, he, all his other uh, other other fights like Henshaw, yeah. etc. Look at the way he's developed now. You know, he's got a more of a masculine man physique. Yeah. You know, he's a lot more mature, and he's just fighting differently. He's just a different pedigree. Right now, he's just a different pedigree. And I think him going over to Ukraine or wherever he went. Yeah, working with Usyk, Usyk, yes. You know, it's given him a different, um, it just taught him a different element of boxing. Um, the way he thinks, the way he carry, carry, the way he carries himself now as a pro, etc. I mean, when I look at him and I've seen the way he's developed from his first fight to now, that is just, it's crazy. So when you look at that fight, look at the Chamberlain now, a lot of people say the Akoli power is the problem and think that 
that if he can neutralize the power of Akoli, he wins the fight. But he's got to neutralize that power first. Of course. Is he able to do such a thing? Well, you, you name me one fighter that moves and fights now. I think Akoli is full. Not really, no. And really, for me personally, I, me personally, I think they're both very brave to take the fight. But I think Akoli is even more. You know, he's even a lot more braver to take um, the fight with Isaac because. You can't uh, if if Akoli had fought yeah someone to a similar level mm. like Isaac for his last fight then went into the Chamberlain fight yep. I can understand but look at the last guy he fought honestly man honestly okay it's like they just pumped fat in that guys you know <laughs> just to kind of make him a crease with myself honestly man I don't wait, know. wait hold on but hold on hold on People look at his amateur pedigree and say, well, he but did he's this. An Olympia, but he's an Olympian. That's, that's it. That's, that's it. it. When you look at... like, cannot take nothing away from When him. you look at the Josh Taylor fight with um, Ahara Davis, people said, well, look at his pedigree as an amateur. Is this the same case of looking into Chamberlain's background as an amateur and Akoli's um, well, you background can't really as an amateur? Well, you can't really compare it because Akoli went to the... You know, he was in the GB, then he went over to the Olympics and he fought. You know, in terms of ped amateur pedigree... Yep. Yeah, obviously Akoli's up there. Yes. Yeah, because Chamberlain never had a chance to. Right. Yeah, but Chamberlain kind of exceeded that. You know that whole um, you know, myth of the whole you know amateur pedigree, and you know kind of gained more respect and fans um, in the pro ranks. Do you think the Wadi Camacho victory, where he showed it came out, do you think that is overrated or underrated in terms of the heart he showed? get himself back in that fight and win it. Well, I think it's underrated. I think people okay. kind of overlook the fact that someone's shoulder popped out. Bro, like he showed up, pop, I saw him, I saw the agony in, the, in my boy's face. Like he showed up, popped out. Any fighter with sense or any fighter would have just been like, Do you know what, mate, forget it. Like my shoulder's out, I can't fight. But he bit down on his gum shoe and the guy fought on. I mean, like, what more of um, um, a gutsy effort does the guy have to prove? Do you know what I mean? And for 10 rounds. focus much on Joshua Parker's fights etc but uh, with um, the way AJ's been going on with the whole momentum and everything that's surrounded him I just think it's an easy AJ fight I think it's an easy AJ win okay I think AJ, AJ Lucas Brown Dillian White that's gonna be a war <laughs> <laughs> that's gonna be a war that is a war, honestly. Um, Dinner's gonna beat him up. Easy. Okay. Yeah. Carson Jones, Ted Cheeseman. Carson Jones, Ted Cheeseman. Do you know what, yeah? Carson Jones is one of them fighters here yeah, where you just don't know. And I say that because of the Brown Rose fight, remember? Yep. He wasn't meant to lose that fight. Carson Jones just came in and just, I don't know, he's done a number on him. And then he walked away victorious. But that being said, I'm not comparing Cheeseman to um, Rose. Rose at all. You know, he's a different predator, he's a different devil. Um, but I just think Cheeseman takes it. I'm okay. not being biased because they're all UK fans, I'm just saying. Okay, yeah. okay. Spence Thurman. Question for whoa. One time. That's a serious fight though, isn't it? That's a serious fight. You're going one time. They get Spence. They get Spence. Where? You're going one time. Hell no. You're going with Spence. I'm sticking to Spence, man. Spence Crawford. Crawford. <laughs> Crawford! <laughs> 
I have to. I have to. I have to. Okay. I have to. Man. Okay. Pound for pound, Jeff Horn versus Crawford. Oh, that's not even a question. Bro. What do you mean? It's I, not a question. Bro, that's, that's box no. box rec has him in the top ten. That's box rec. <laughs> that's that's box rec. Uh, bo- wait, saying, wait, wait. Box rec is the is the bible of boxing for some people. For some people. For casuals that have an argument, go. Oh, it says it in box rec. That's box rec, and that's casual fans. <laughs> Horn against Crawford. Come on, bro. Do you know what I mean? That's come on, Crawford all day, man. You know what I mean? Crawford all day. Jeff Horn versus Thomas Hearns. <laughs> Oh, no, <laughs> Jeff Horn takes it all day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <isn't it? laughs> Jeff Horn all day. And you know what? You can even throw in there as well. Sugar Wave Robinson, <laughs> Marvin Hagler, you know, throw them all in there as well. And listen, Jeff Horn is a different pedigree to all of them. <laughs> oh my god. Hey, listen. Oh, you've got man. you've got some fans today. Oh, I trust you. Got some you. new fans. I'm gonna get slaughtered. I know. <laughs> trust me. I'm gonna get absolutely slaughtered. No, for real. No, no. Okay, how about this one? At middleweight, Golovkin versus Nigel Ben. Ben. I think Ben is just too explosive. Ben. Yeah? Ben in his heyday. Yeah. Don't touch him. Roy Jones. Andre Ward. At, 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 at their peak. Super middleweight. At their peak. At their peak peak. Ward. Jeez. Ward. Okay, Eric had a finally. Uh, how do people contact you? Um, you can find me on uh, Twitter, Eric Mokonzo, Instagram, Eric Mokonzo, man. Just hit me, hit, hit, hit me up and um, just follow the journey, man. But don't forget, March the 3rd, March the 3rd, I'm back in that ring, you're cool, my favourite venue, man. Do you know what I mean? It's going to be explosive. Trust me, I'm really going to pull everything out of the hat on that day, man. Honestly. Thank you so much, Eric. You take care. You take care.